everybody, it's Justin Adkins here for Creative Scrapbooker Magazine, and today I'm so excited to be sharing with you a really fun rainbow pastel birthday card that I created using some products by Thermoweb and some dyes by Lawn Fawn. I started off by blending up a background for my card, and because I'm using pastel colors, I'm using a little bit more lighter oxides, I'm starting off with some Kitsch Flamingo, and then what I'm gonna go into next, I'm actually gonna go to the bottom of the panel and use some shaded lilac. I like to alternate between the top and bottom ink coloring because I find that when I do that, I get a more even section per color. So that way I'm not super heavy handed on the pink, but then at the very end, the purple ends up being a very small area. Next, I'm going to be blending some dried marigold into the Kitsch Flamingo, and I'm just gonna kind of push back and forth between my Kitsch Flamingo blender and my dried marigold blender to get that ombre blend. We're gonna focus then again on the cool colors. I'm using some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink to blend into that shaded lilac. As you can see, I did turn my panel, and that just helps me get a little bit of a better angle so when I'm crafting and ink blending, my hands are a little more comfortable, and when I find that I'm comfortable, my blends turn out better. I'm now using some squeezed lemonade distress oxide to blend into that dried marigold because that squeezed lemonade is so light I don't really need to do much of a back and forth with the dried marigold. I'm going to finish off my blend by using some twisted citron to sort of bridge the gap between that salvage patina and that squeezed lemonade of course pulling those blenders back in just to help get a really nice seamless blend. Now that my pastel rainbow ink blended panel is all blended, it's time to add a little bit more extra detail by using some water bleach marks. I like to use the handle part of my distress sprayer and just flick some water from it onto my panel and then I'll pick it up with a clean microfiber cloth and I'll get some really nice water bleach marks on there. I just love how that adds a little bit of extra detail to my panel. I'm cleaning off my panel with a brush just to get all that residue off, and then I'm gonna use the Stitch Rippled Background by Lawn Fun to help create a stitched detail onto my panel. I'm gonna tack down my die with some Pixie Tape by Thermoweb. It's a really great low-tack tape that especially helps when you're die cutting and making sure that when you're processing something through your die cutting machine that the dies are not gonna shift around. We all wanna make sure that we're die cutting the areas that we want so you don't have to end up doing it two or three times. Here you'll be able to see how that stitch detail looks on our panel and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is grab an A2 size card base and adhere this background to it using some Ultrabond liquid adhesive. Now I know that my bottle looks very well loved and used and you can see that crackled label. I love using this adhesive. It just works really nicely and I love that when you use a liquid adhesive it gives you just a little bit of extra give for a couple seconds so you can move things around if need be. Now that most of my card base is prepped and ready to go, it's time to move on to some foiling. I'm grabbing the toner card fronts in the solid black and the rainbow shattered glass foil by Thermoweb. So I'm gonna unroll it, pick a pattern that works. I really like this one because you get all the way from blue down to green. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out one of the solid black A2 toner card fronts and just make sure that I'm going to cut it right to size. I like to use a ruler and a rotary trimmer by Ulfa in order to make sure that everything is nice and trimmed to the appropriate size for my card. Next, when using toner products, I like to brush the back of my uh, foil and the front of my toner card front with a microfiber cloth, but I've also incorporated using just a dry brush as well because I'm in a pet-friendly household. I always find that one or two pet hairs find their way onto my projects, and I always like to brush them off. I'm going to go ahead and put my foil on top of my toner card front so that the pretty side is facing up and not touching the toner card front, and I'm putting it in a mink carrier sheet. Don't mind me as I'm just fidgeting. I'm wanting to make sure everything is nice and lined up because I'm trying not to use any sort of tape to adhere it. I do have my mini mink preheated to my level three and it's going to go ahead and process my toner background through and I should be getting a really pretty impression with that foil. You're going to see that in just a second with our peel reveal. I like to make sure it's all cooled off before I peel and as you can see it's basically a perfect transfer. I just love how that looks. It's going to be so perfect for our card. 
Next, I'm reaching for my giant outlined happy birthday and portrait orientation die cut from Lawn Fawn, and I am going to die cut my foiled panel using this die, and it's going to give a really fun foiled sentiment feel. Of course, I'm going to pull out some pixie tape, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere the die to my panel, trying really good just to make sure that I'm putting enough pieces that it's not going to shift around that much, but also that it's going to hold everything in place where I need it to be as as well so i'm going to go ahead run it through a couple times and then just because it's a little bit more of a detailed die cut and then we should be ready to go with this die now you may think that i forgot to edit this part out of the video but i didn't i'm actually really carefully going in and cleaning up my die and what i'm doing is i'm trying to take out each of the letters because the letters are actually what we're going to be using for our foiled element. So I'm going through and just making sure I get each little bits and bob. You wanna make sure that you got that little dot that goes above the eye. You don't want that going away. And I'm just pulling each bit out and putting it into a little embellishment tray. Um, of course, this is gonna be a little bit more of a tedious process to do, but it's gonna give you some really nice foiled elements to your card. You can also save that frame for another card as as well so it's not going to go to waste but i just wanted to use the letters from the foiled panel die cut for my card using that giant outline happy birthday die i ran it through my die cutting machine twice more with some white cardstock and i got two of the outline dies i'm going to go ahead and use some ultra bond liquid adhesive to adhere them directly on top of each other i highly recommend investing in some fine tip applicators for your glue bottle as for dies like this, it's going to make it a lot easier to make sure that you're not getting some globby glue transfers onto your panel. So as you can see, I have my first die cut adhered to my card. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do with that second one is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the letters inside of it first. And as you can see, I'm kind of just using some glue and I'm using an acrylic block to make sure that my pressure is nice. And also don't be afraid to pull in a sort of like a jewel picking or an embellishment tool as that's also going to help you push those uh, letters into their die cut areas. Now being up front, this is a task that's a little tedious and it is going to take a little extra bit of planning and concentration. We've got some duplicate letters that are present for this card, so just make sure that you're using the correct colored A in the correct spot because there are two of them along with the P's and the Y's. There are also some inner bits that you want to save from your white die cut as well, like each of your P's has an inside piece, your B's have an inside piece, R's, D's, you want to make sure to save those so you can pop those inside as they're really going to help make each of those words just really pop. I'm going to use my Ultra Bond Liquid Adhesive once again, and I'm doing it onto only the white area of my panel because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to layer that second uh, die cut right on top, and that's going to give some really nice dimension. It's like using foam tape without actually using foam tape, if that makes any sense. After I finish using my acrylic block to apply even pressure, I'm grabbing my Ultra Bond Adhesive once more to add a couple bit of the clear iridescent bubbles from Studio Katia to my project. I'm kind of focusing on the little swirls and confetti dots that come from that giant outlined happy birthday die cut, and I like to also use my uh, embellishment tool as well to help press them down and make sure that they're all in the correct space. I really like adding little bits of embellishment to my card because I feel like it gives the recipient a little bit of extra glitz and just fun shimmer to it that they're really going to just even love your card even more. Once my embellishments are all in place, my card is all completed and ready to go. Thank you all so very much for stopping by the Creative Scrapbooker YouTube channel today. Once again, my name is Justin Adkins, and you can find me on Instagram at Justin Note by Justin, and also on YouTube at Justin Note by Justin as well. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a wonderful day, and happy crafting, everyone. Goodbye.